Osho. Hey, I'd like to share something with you. Uh, again, this is on the uh, international news off of uh, a link off of uh, Hal Lindsey's website. Uh, you probably, you might have already read it. If not, you can go there, HalLindsey.com, and uh, read this. This is an interesting article. Okay. Now this is uh, called Muslim Televangelist Takes His Message to Millions. Heart and Soul. And excuse me if I, I if I don't pronounce the names right, you know, it's not that I'm trying to be rude or anything, it's just they're hard to pronounce. But this is by Mag Magdi Ab. Del Hadi, uh, Arab Affairs Analysis, BBC World uh, Service. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Amir, A M R, Amir Khaled's uh, unique brand of Muslim uh, preaching has made him one of the most popular preachers in the world. Okay, now I'm not going to read all of this because this, this is a real long article, but this is, I uh, hope I can read enough of it to give you an idea of what's going on here. All right, it says, Such is his appeal. He was recently named the 13th most influential person in the world by Time magazine. And let me see if I can... That's the dude right there. But, uh, let's see if we can go on a little uh, further here. In Cairo, his DVDs stand on the top shelves reserved for best sellers in the Virgin Records store next to Bruce Willis and Charlie Chaplin. His controversial style, comparable to the almost rock star approach of some America's Christian evangelists, has drawn criticism from the religious establishment and he has moved away from his native Egypt. Ironically, Okay, ironically, thanks to the proliferation of satellite channels, he is now able to reach far greater numbers than he could have ever done, and his message remained within the con confines of a mosque or a lecture hall. You're fired! Now, following on from his hugely successful TV shows, which are watched by millions across the world, of course, I've never heard of it, but I usually don't watch those kind of stuff anyway. <laughs> uh, Mr. Khalid, Khaled um, plans to launch his own version of the reality television show, The Apprentice. The aim of it is not to make money, but to make the youth ready to support the society, he told BBC. The Apprentice began in the U.S. with business magnet Donald Trump searching for a candidate to run one of his operations. Let's see if I can scroll down a little bit more here. Uh, I think I lost my spot here. Okay. So there we go. In the U.K., versions version of the show, the contestants compete for a six-figure salary working for multi-millionaire businessman Lord Sugar. The unsuccessful candidates earn his catchphrase dismissal, You're fired! But Mr. Khaled said that the fundamental uh, difference between those and his own show was that the competition would not be personal for material gain, but would, uh, would search out contestants who would come up with the best idea to serve his or her community. 
and let's go, I'll just go down real quick and skip down some uh, under a heading of Fresh Style. The secret of Mr. Khaled's uh, success is simple, says young women in colorful headscarves in Cairo. He speaks our language. Unlike traditional preachers, he wears a casual su suit and uses the Egyptian vernacular in his programs. Formerly trained imams uh, tend to use classical Arabic. Mr. Khaled, uh, who even has his own YouTube channel, has spearheaded a growth in his style of evangelism. But the difference goes beyond language, says Gen Genevieve, Genevieve, or something, Abdo, or the author of a seminal book on Islamic revival in Egypt. She believes the new breed of preachers appear to fulfill an important need. And I get oh, where is it? There it is. Yeah, and that's his new. Uh, there's more. Just go to howlindsay.com if you want to read this. Now, this is something to be, you know, to be concerned about. You know, I mean, you got things like this. You know, this is what that kind of thing is what deceives the world. And you not only have it going on in in the, you know, from. Uh, people who embraces Islam and things, but you have it in, in, in other areas, too. They they have that charismatic way, you know, that they just, oh, that they're just, hey, one of you, and hey, you know, they're hip with the scene. That's what goes on. It gets sucked into the church, pulled into it like a vacuum cleaner, and that's what's causing the downfall of the church. But there is those who will stand strong. But I thought that you would find this interesting. And you can go there and to read the whole article yourself. So I thought I would uh, share that with you. So God bless you. Shalom. Ha-ho.